One way to engage students with simulations in lecture is by using the simulation as an experiment and asking students to predict the outcome of that experiment. You know, there's this well-known psychological effect that people remember what they expected to see, not what they actually saw. If you just show it to them, then they're not emotionally and intellectually invested in the answer. But if you force them to make a prediction first... Oh yeah, so what do you predict if I um, increase the number of coins? Then they're interested to know, is my prediction correct or is my prediction wrong? And they're much more likely to remember if they were forced to commit to the wrong answer and then see it different. I will pose a question. I will allow the students to talk with each other, decide what they think might happen. They write down individually and then they discuss together and form a, a group opinion. The simulations really provide something that they all can look at individually and they're all visualizing the same thing when they're discussing. So I'm asking a very specific question here and really discuss this with people around you. I've just got a refrigerator sitting there. Is there a force of friction? Talk about it and think about it. If you were to like switch that plane, then there would be a force of friction upward to resist it upward. slipping down. The instructor can then elicit those responses from the student and pull out their reasoning before they essentially conduct the experiment. So everyone finish up your discussion and let's see what we're thinking. So it seems like the majority of people say yes. There is a force of friction. Someone explain that to me. Aaron, you, what, what are you thinking? Isn't it just like friction is kind of like molecules or whatever of the two things like rubbing against each other so they're still kind of mixing. So, now force, anyone else? And if they conduct the experiment using this simulation. Here I've got a simulation of this. This simulation allows me to apply a little bit of force. I'm applying some force, I'm applying some force. Oh, what just happened there? The students can then reflect on what actually happened and the instructor can have a whole class discussion around the science and the reasoning and ideas that were going on. And where did that frictional force go? It disappeared. Seems odd, right? I push on it a little, there's a frictional force. I don't push on it at all, there's no frictional force if it's not moving. Let's bring up an example. We've adapted one interactive lecture demonstration to use the moving man simulation. In this case, we give students a scenario. For instance, the man standing still for five seconds, then walking at a constant speed for 10 seconds, and then standing still for another five seconds. We ask them to predict what, how the velocity versus time and position versus time graphs are gonna look. I tend to integrate that in with clicker questions. So first I'll do that part where students are drawing the graph and collaborating with each other. And then I'll kind of pick four really common answers and make it a clicker question. Please see our video on clickers for more information on how to use this technique with FET. That simulation can allow you to extend what the students can see and enrich the discussions. So for instance, I can take the simulation and show the velocity vector at the same time that I'm showing the graph. And this can really help students digest the coordination between the man's movement and the graph. A real strength with the FET is that I can also join that with an actual physical demonstration. So with the physical demonstration, we can see what's going on in the chemistry world. And then within a FET simulation, we can look inside the beaker and not just see the liquid, but what are the particles doing? This can be a valuable way to get students to engage with the simulation, even in a large lecture setting. That kind of, of questioning, that curiosity that is brought out in them really helps them go through investigating, then seeing the patterns, forming the concepts on their own. Whereas one time I would be more, let's teach the equations, let's teach the, the math that goes along with it. With FET, it's forced me in a whole different way to start to think about, well, let's explain what's going on. Let's look at different representations of macroscopic or at the particle level. And let's also include far greater inquiry. Drag the slider bar of the friction. Oh, so I can make lots of friction. Let's try that. 